Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. How is everybody getting along? Well, up here in the northeast, we have what's left of Hurricane Ian becoming a pesky coastal low at this point. It will be slowly on its way out after backing up into the coast. And look at this, through 70% chance through day five of development here into the Caribbean. How promising does this look? Is this going to become a hurricane like the GFS indicates? Look at that as we go through the weekend into next week, right around October 11th. Look at that. That's a full-fledged hurricane, as indicated by the GFS. Is this being picked up by the Euro and other models? We'll take a look here. Let's get into it. All right, so take a look. Here is Invest 96L. It is got a lot going for it. It's a big old blob of convection here. It is really far to the south, and that's the only thing that kind of worries me for development. If you really want to see a system develop, it is a bit further south. But as you look, the center of circulation is kind of up in here. So at this point, you know, it still has pretty well chance. It's got good outflow. Um, we'll see it will interact a little bit with some of the land here. We do have some other thunderstorms over here in Central America. Those don't really have too much of a chance to develop at this time. All right, so let's take a look at the models here. We'll start off with the GFS as I showed you originally here. Yeah, this is our big elongated spot here. 70% chance through day five. We also have another area out here we're watching out by the Cape Verde Islands. And look at back towards the United States, still dealing with what's left of Yin here. I'll go over that with the HRRR mesoscale model with you with the future radar. But let's put this into motion, shall we? Take a look at this. So this is by about the time of Thursday at 2 p.m. We start to have this disturbance, you know, this is essentially Invest 91L here, and this system will be propagating towards the uh, west here, and it will go south most of the Caribbean islands. Now, it will clip the middle and lower part of the Lesser Antilles here, and as we continue towards the west, look at this. It starts to curve a little bit more west-southwest here, so watch this as we go in time. There is an area of high pressure up here into parts of the Gulf Coast region, so that will help steer the system more on a westerly track here so let's continue to put this into motion here you can see as we go towards friday at 8 p.m look at this it's becoming a little bit better organized and here is by saturday at 8 a.m it's looking very impressive just south of the island of Hispaniola and puerto rico here take a look at this this is pretty pretty remarkable here and as you head towards the west you can see the system arcing a little bit towards the west-southwest jaunt here, just south of, it looks like it's going to come in according to the GFS here, just south of Jamaica at this point. So if you're in Jamaica or the Cayman Islands, you still want to keep a very close eye on the system. Look at this, Monday at 5 p.m. It is essentially forming an eye here. Look at this. This is pretty intense here. Um, and as we continue to put this into motion, the GFS continues to intensify this to a hurricane near the Cayman Islands. So if you are in the Cayman Islands, you're going to want to keep an eye on this. If you're anywhere in the Central or Latin America here, all the way up to Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula as well, definitely keep a very close eye on this system as it heads towards the west-southwest around this high pressure. Look how it becomes extremely intense. Keep in mind, this is the time of year almost that uh, Hurricane Wilma in 2005 developed in this very similar location and became a monster hurricane. Look at that. Just a tremendous circulation there. Look at that tremendous circulation and look how it just barrels right into the Yucatan Peninsula. Not to say that's going to be the landfall point, but it does spend a pretty decent amount of time. This is Saturday. So let's back that up to landfall. That's right around Thursday, October 13th. Look at that, right around Cancun area and Cozumel, and then it continues westward. Does it make it into the Gulf of Mexico? It doesn't look like it does. This is by October 16th. You can see this continues to head into parts of Mexico and Latin America. All right, so take a look at the Euro here. Here is Invest 91L, essentially a broad area of low pressure here. The picking being picked up on the Euro this time. Uh, so take a look at this as we continue across the Caribbean. The Euro is a bit faster. It's further south. You can see, and it's weaker. That tends to be the Euro. And oh, wow, look at this. This is quite a bit different than the GFS. So this is why we got to take, you know, all this modeling with a grain of salt because this brings it into the Pacific and then brings it up to a potential storm over here kind of like Bonnie did at the beginning of the season. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on it here. Um, if I back this up, you can see 
pretty much just like the GFS, you have this area of high pressure. It's pretty well keeping these winds. So essentially what the Euro is doing, and I'll show you in the upper upper air maps here uh, momentarily um, for North America, it's showing that this high pressure is much stronger on the Euro than it is on the GFS, hence keeping the storm further to the south and weaker into Central America. All right, so let's take a look at the Pacific side here. We have a 20% chance through day five. Will this system affect anything? Well, let's take a look here. Let's back the modeling data all the way up to present day. Look at this. So yeah, we have some system that might spin up, but look at, for the most part, this is Wednesday, Thursday, October 13th. The big story is going to be with the big hurricane over here into the Gulf of Mexico. And as we head out into the Western Pacific, ooh, look at that big storm out. This is reminiscent of winter time. Do we have anything out here into the Western Pacific? Look at this. Look how quiet it is. For the first time in a while from Vietnam, the Philippines, South Korea, Japan, China, you are looking pretty good. Let's put the long, medium and long range out here. See if there's anything brewing. These are storm systems coming off Asia here. This could be an area of interest, but look at this. It's kind of way out here and it may recurve. Let's take a look and see what the GFS does with this anyway. So this is uh, Sunday, October 9th. As we continue, there it is. Ooh. There's a couple areas of concern come the second week of October. Look at this. So we have a spin up here right around the Philippines, just west of the Philippines, potentially heading westward here. So if you're in South China or Vietnam, want to keep an eye on this and look at this. This looks like it could become a super typhoon. Yeah, so just as the Atlantic is heating up, it looks like the Western Pacific will really be heating up. And look at that. Potential typhoon for Da Danang area. Yeah, that's a possibility here. So if you live in Da Nang, you just dealt with a uh, nor uh, typhoon Noru here. And as we continue to go up towards Japan, is this going to become a threat? Well, look at that. Just as I thought. But look at these typhoons. The reason I mention these is because they go up here into the Gulf of Alaska and come up here. And they mess up our weather here in the east coast of the United States. All right, so as we get into the overnight here, what is exactly going to happen here? Well, the HRRR mesoscale model here with what's left of Ian, you can see the center of circulation is right around in here. It's backed up pretty far into the coastline here, and it's bringing all these feeder bands even as far north as Binghamton, Wilkes-Barre, and in parts of the Hudson Valley all day on your Tuesday Let's see what it holds for your Wednesday. Let's take it overnight, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Look at that. We have, yeah, some big heavy feeder bands forming into parts of eastern Long Island here and then parts heading back into the lower and mid-Susquehanna River Valley here into parts of the Catskills, the Poconos, the Hudson Valley, and into southern and central and eastern New England here. Now take a look at this as we head throughout the rest of the night into early tomorrow morning. You see very little movement here. This is why I'm very pessimistic in the weather forecast here for the Northeast. We continue to have, look at look at all this. This is just feeder bands just feeding in off the coast. It's pretty much a coastal low at this point. It's no longer anything tropical, but it is the remnant energy here of Ian. And as we go in time here, look at this. This is 12 p.m. You're still looking at heavy rain in parts of Scranton, Wilkes-Barre area, parts of the Catskills, Poconos, Look at this, New York City, you'll get some gully washers moving in, and we still have some big ones moving in here off the coast here into parts of New England. Now, it starts to pinwheel away a little bit towards 6 p.m. You still have a rainy commute out through Long Island here, New York City, down to Philadelphia. But we're finally clearing things out a little bit up here in parts of the Susquehanna River Valley, the Hudson River Valley, parts of the Catskills, and Poconos. And as we continue in time, look at this. Finally pinwheeling off the coastline here. That's about the only thing we have to talk about here in much of North America, other than some showers and thunderstorms here in the upper part of the Midwest. But look at that. Still clipping. This is 1 a.m. Thursday morning. We're still having a hard time getting rid of what's left of Ian here. Look at that. Pummeling parts of Cape Cod here with heavier showers and thunder showers. Most of these will be heavier uh, showers rather than thunder showers, but we could still eke out a few lightning strikes here and there. Uh, but look at that. Finally, it took all the way to Thursday to clear this mess out. All right, so taking a look at the Euro upper air charts here. So essentially, this is, yeah, this is Ian. 
you can see how boxed in Ian is here. High pressure on both sides and that strung out between the two. It keeps blocking. It's not blocking in Greenland, but it's blocking further south. This this system has really caused, you know, a kind of a headache here for the Northeast. Not major damage or anything like it did in Florida and South Carolina, but look at that. To the nevertheless, it kind of... It kind of congeals out of North America finally by the end of the week. And you can see a trough kind of kicks in to take its place here. And there is that high pressure, this massive tropical high that's building across parts of the Gulf of Mexico. And this is what's going to protect uh, the United States uh, from Invest 91L as it continues to slam either from the Yucatan down into Latin America, depending on which model you're following. Uh, but look at that, yeah, th that high pressure continues to remain dominant. That is pretty remarkable. Look at this, look at this area of high pressure. It's just pretty well entrenched here, so that means any tropical system that tries to develop through mid-October, it's going to have a very hard time until we get to, like, uh, right around the 14th of October here, where we start to see a big pattern reversal. Look at this blocking going on up here in Greenland. And then you have this area low pressure, so any storms that are trying to form out here will likely get drawn up uh, east of this low pressure system. But look at this. Anything west of this line will be blocked and deflected into Latin America and into the Pacific. All right, so taking a look at the GFS, pretty similar here and kicking Ian out. High pressure here to the east, so a bigger trough, though, here on the GFS. This is going to be interesting. I think that's what helps draw... Uh, what's going to become, an, or what is Invest 90, 91L here uh, towards the Yucatan rather than Latin America? Look at that. There's a lot of troughiness up here into parts of the Great Lakes and Northeast. This is Sunday, October 9th. So, yeah, just looking at a downright raw, cooler than average weekend here across the Northeast. But look at this. High pressure really does start to build in. So, this will help kick the system westward as well. And look at that. There it is. It's showing up there. Um, on the GFS, actually, this is actually the 12Z run. I wanted to show you that momentarily because that brings it in further south. So let's take a look what happened with the 18Z run here. Bringing the high pressure a little bit further to the north here, which allows this system to travel more towards the Yucatan rather than uh, areas like Nicaragua and Honduras here. So that's going to be a big difference. We'll have to see if that trend continues in lifting this high a little bit further to the north. Not to say that it's going to enter the Gulf of Mexico, but look at that. Yeah, this this is by the second weekend of August, or, uh, October here. This is uh, it's actually the third weekend. So look at this. This is quite a massive trough here setting up across the northeast. Massive blocking up here towards Greenland and a big ridge out west. This could be the development of these troughs that get some of these nor'easters going as we're heading into the winter time. And I want to keep note that I am coming out with my winter weather outlook. I promise it will be out by the middle of this month. All right, so taking a look at total precipitation amounts across North America, there is not a whole lot going on here unless you're in the tropics or parts of the northeast or the desert southwest. So, yeah, let's essentially break this down uh, regionally here we're going to go into the northeast well, let's take a look at what we got going on the euro continues to paint oh that that is pretty interesting that's uh that's anywhere from wow another inch or two maybe three closer to four inches towards new york city this might be overdone a little bit i actually want to take a look at the h triple r model it's done so well with this storm so yeah here it is this is more in line with what i'm thinking maybe another inch to inch and a half look out at eastern long island look at that two to three more inches and then in parts of cape cod southeastern massachusetts one to 2.5 more inches potentially that takes us through thursday morning and taking a look at john here he is out in westbury new york uh this was just the other day on saturday look at this keith urban avenue in westbury new york sun was coming out so the sun has been a very has been at a uh kind of a not at a discount, but at a premium because we've had the remnants of Ian hanging around. But nice capture there, John. All right, so we're taking a look here at your Wednesday. At midpoint of the week, we are warming up a little bit into parts of the Ohio Valley, into parts of the Northeast. But we are hard-pressed to get out of the 50s here along the coastline. So we're going to be dealing with some showers. 
continuing with the remnants of Ian, but look what's behind it. We have this big ridge kicking up the 70s up into parts of the Great Lakes. So as we head into your Thursday, look at this. Big, interesting cold air outbreak. Just as we're warming up into the 70s, finally, with sunshine into the northeast, we have some 40s showing up here into the upper Midwest, and that is getting some thoughts going of fall. And as we take a look at your Friday, yeah, this big old trough is really digging in here across parts of the plains and into parts of the northeast and as you can see this is by saturday october 8th here at 8 p.m look at this erie pennsylvania 49 51 in burlington this is rather cool air tremendously cool air so if you have any outdoor plans really really dress for it because it is going to be downright chilly and that trough, you can see, is just kicking in. We have this massive ridge out here out west. And then we head on into Monday of next week. We don't have that frame just yet. But look at that. That finishes off your weekend. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. Don't forget Facebook, social media, Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern, also Susquehanna Weather, also MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com, Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell button. If you haven't already, question or comment down below. Let's keep the weather conversation going. Thanks for joining me.